In Death's Door, you play as a nameless crow whose day job is the brutal murder, pun intended, of beings who, through daily exercise and a balanced diet of meats, vegetables, and stews, has stayed alight for so long that their social security checks have taken up 95% of crow government expenses. This, of course, led to a Great Depression for the average working crow, because instead of the annual government-funded concert with professional, Grammy award-winning bands to raise worker morale, they now have to sit through open mic poetry of all things. Now that is as horrifying a depiction of hell on earth as I've ever seen. So these old bastards have got to go! We're tired of listening to this gay rhymey shit! We want the music! Where's the bass? Where's Kanye? Help us! They're not selling beers anymore? We gotta buy green tea now instead? We can't take this shit anymore! So, there are five main areas of the game. The wage slave office space of the crows, which functions as a hub so you can quickly travel to any checkpoints you discover in the overworld, and like real life, is devoid of color and happiness. Then in the overworld itself, we have the Lost Cemetery, which interconnects the three realms of the Grand Souls, aka the main bosses of the game that are collecting those compounding social security checks. Your main objective is to slay each of them and take their souls to open the titular death's door and confront the final boss. The visual design of the world is a big strength of the game. A lot of times I would find myself slowing down my pace to just enjoy and take in the surrounding environments. The biomes of the three main bosses are very distinct from one another in terms of presentation and how you navigate, and their differences will keep you from getting bored as you trudge your way through the game. But I will admit that they weren't fun enough to inspire me to backtrack through them again after I unlocked more obstacle clearing skills to find more secrets I wasn't able to access during my initial run to the main bosses. But that's just me personally. I don't even like fighting the same group of mobs again after I cleared them once. I did it in every Dark Souls game, and I do it in here as well. My first run through an area, I'll fight and kill every mob in my path, but if I die before the next checkpoint, when I respawn, I'm just gonna run past and ignore every mob I beat already, and not stop till I get to the guys that killed me before. Because in my mind, I beat these guys already, they can kiss my ass. I'm a no rematch champ, guys. In terms of the actual combat, the game is very simple in complexity. You have light attacks and a heavy attack that you can charge for more damage, but more often than not, those charging heavies got me into more trouble than they were worth. So 95% of the game, I just spam light attacks. Depending on your weapon, it's either going to be smashing XX, XXX, or XXXX. No XXYXs or delayed X presses here. You do have four different kinds of ranged attacks and a dodge roll as well, but I'm a melee kind of guy at heart, so I spec'd out my character to fit that playstyle, maxing out my strength and movement speed by the end of the game. Despite that simplicity of combat, it was still fun to fight in this game, and I think that had a lot to do with how the enemies were designed. Every enemy has very clear tells before each of their attacks. While some do have hyper armor and are unable to be staggered, those clear tells in their animations will keep you safe. In fact, the hardest mob in the game is this guy right here, but only because of the delays in his attacks are tricky to time before you get used to him. These clean animations of course apply to the main bosses as well, who taunt you as you travel through their kingdoms, and while you fight them they move and attack like a Pixar villain would fight a hero, giving them a lot of personality. Enemy attack animations are so smooth that if you ever wanted to try a no-hit speedrun of a game, Death's Door would be a good beginner game to try that out. There are a good amount of puzzles in the game as well, but none of them are very hard or really that memorable, unfortunately. But they are still fun to move through and you'll get through most in a few moments without too much trouble. But the one final negative I have for this game is that it is short. It only took me about 7 hours to beat the game. Like I said before, I could have backtracked through beaten areas to unlock more secrets, 
And there are some secret bosses as well, but I had no desire to. If I had to guess, I'd say it maybe take another 2 hours to 100% the game, but after that there's really not any replay value. I was satisfied with my 7 hour experience, but at a $20 price tag, 7 to 9 hours of fun may not be worth it for some. I still do recommend Death's Door, it's a well polished game with a lot of heart that went into it, but just keep in mind that it's short and I'd imagine it'd be a one and done experience for most. Thank you.